Oh, what's up? I'm Austin Griffith. I'm here with the Build Guild. It's a, an abnormal bow tie Friday. We're all in weird Airbnbs. Okay, I'm an air. Zach, Zach and I both have these weird fine arts <laughs> behind us because <laughs> we're we got kicked out of our houses by our wives and we're living in Airbnbs. I don't know if that's really that's really true. That's probably not true. Okay, so uh, first up, I think Damo's Damu's going to show off something cool. I bet it has to do with loogies, but I don't know. But I'm excited. Take a Hi story, guys. Demo. Hi guys. I will share my screen. Oh yeah, it is. This is another beer related with the loogies. This is the a, a new accessory for your fancy loogie that you can uh, mean with your loogie coin. Oh, that makes it's, sense. Yeah. yeah. So you earn the loogie fair. coins over in the game and you can come back to fancy loogies and use loogie coins to purchase. Oh, that's cool. Exactly. And there are only 10 uh, earrings for your fancy loogie. So you have to run to buy uh, uh, one earring. Uh, you have you need uh, two hundred thousand Louis coins. That uh, now there are only two people that have two hundred thousand Louis coins. Mm, uh, one are, are uh, I and Austin. So we can try to mint uh, one earring for each one. <laughs> Zach, you don't have two hundred thousand Louis coins yet. No, I got to go sell one more. You're I, I seen that. Uh, I seen that Zach uh, need something around uh, one hundred thousand or something like that. I'll get there. But if if he ca uh, keep playing, he will get the. Oh, the, that is the nice. Everything have have three random color: blue, uh, red, and green. I get a blue one. So that's an now, SVG NFT though, right? Like that whole yeah. thing is on chain and you you like crafted that to look like that. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I I get the SVG from one uh, side that with a Creative Common license. license. Cool. And now I can select a fancy Louis to wear this. Oh, I, I haven't tested it. It's just the first one, the first time I, I, I do it. Uh, here and you can preview where it look like in each fancy loogie that you own. <laughs> Which one I will choose? <laughs> like the rolling, the rolling bow tie. For sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Put it on the put it on the rolling bow tie. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's so yeah. fancy. Yeah. <laughs> you you have to try it live because it's so expensive. Two hundred thousand loogie coins. <laughs> the transaction is coming. Ooh. Yeah, the fancy look is wearing. And if I go to fancy loogies, can, can you see my screen in the yep, fancy loogies? Yep, fancy loogies.com. Yep. Yep. Uh, your fancy loogies. Is this still using events right here? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I I have to update this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spend a lot of time watching this little spinner go whenever I'm playing with yeah. loogies. The 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 event parsing is it works great for when you have like one or two of them, but when you yeah. start a bunch. That beat. There he is. The fancy Louis with the earring. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it needs, oh man. There's like a really funny meme going around about, uh, it's like Gen Z kids and they have like one earring and like puffy hair and it's like they're. <laughs> you mute yourself. I'm muted. There's there's a really funny meme going around about like Gen Z kids with like the one earring and the puffy hair. I feel like he needs the puffy hair right here too. But <laughs> the, the earring's great. It, it's helped. I, I, I try first to put some hat or 
or a, a crown, uh, something like that. But it's really hard to look it uh, look good because the eyes are on the top of the head. We yeah, man. There's so much fun stuff we could do with this. It's <laughs> we got to get some more games going. It seems like we were we're like really close to building a game as the Build Guild. I feel like we just need to put some cycles into it and make something that's fun. Spencer's got this cool universe generator. We've got like this whole loogie verse going on. So many cool things happening. Great, yeah, great yeah. build, Damu. Yeah. And we're going to need spaceships we... with loogies in them. Piloting yeah, spaceships. Like them <laughs> yeah. I had an Don't artist. Forget to... yeah, go ahead. Don't forget to mint your earring outing. Okay. I, so I just need to go to earrings.fancyloogies.com. Yeah. I, I will send the link here. I don't see the... uh, fancyloogies.com. What did I? I did something wrong. Uh, I, I don't see the link to the chat. Uh, yeah. Oh, earrings. I, I, I sent the link. I, I sent the link. I got it. I got it. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'm still on the screen. Here we go. Connecting my wallet. Do I, I have 200,000 Lugi coins? I didn't think I did. Yeah. It's, it's probably because, from uh, buying a bunch of ships though, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, you, like you exactly. get 20,000 with each ship. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the and the Louis coin are burned, are burned, are burned. So we just destroyed like oh, I was gonna say we just destroyed like half the the supply of Lugi coins. The price is gonna go up. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. What's happened? What's happened? <laughs> I don't know. What does it say? Classic Web three error there. I don't have. Hmm. How do you actually check your balance of those? Log into Sailor yeah, that's, that's a good question. Do I go to Sailor? Uh, Sailor Lugies, maybe? No, if you don't have enough Louis coin, you will get that message. Okay. Let's let it. My, the RP. Yeah, I've got enough. There we go. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Back Maybe. Over. Let's try one uh, more time. We, yeah, we check the contract uh, transaction. Oh, out, out of gas. Out oh, of gas. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that. Oh. Kind of red. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Nice. Oh no, that's going to take a long time, huh? Because it's got to go through all the events and find them. How, how, how many fancy Louis do you so have? Many, so many. <laughs> <laughs> so many. 26. <laughs> <laughs> well, 26 that are free. A bunch of them are locked up in uh, the ships, right? Yeah. Oh, All this right. is, these have the fancy eyes too. Yep. Done. Your fancy loogie is wearing it. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Great build, dude. Man, I Thank feel you. like I have been on calls with some folks that are uh, kind of like big time in the space and very smart and building cool things. And they don't have as many mechanics as we have with loogies. <laughs> So I feel like we like the loogie verse could be like super huge and could be something way bigger. We just are pretty quiet about, I mean, like we're loud about it, but we're just not, we just don't have huge followings of folks. So I feel like we have like all the cookie cutter stuff ready to go to try to make some bigger game. I wonder what some good first steps could be to attack that, but keep building, keep building awesome stuff like this. Like, like 
it, it seems silly, but it's actually like pushing the boundaries in a lot of ways, right? Like we're doing some neat things and it'd be fun to see these all come together. Maybe the universe generator ends up building a world where you have to bring loogies in somehow or something like that. Yeah. But okay, who's up next? Etta, do you want to show off your article by any chance? I would love to see that next. If you want to share it, just kind of give us a recap and just like, you know, like, like I said earlier, just kind of make it, make sure to mention that just like, if you're a build guild builder and you're writing about stuff, you should do that. And you should withdraw from your stream for writing about stuff too. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Edda if you want to show off the, the article you just released. Yeah, for sure. So uh, let me share my screen and I hope there's not too much background noise. Um, but yeah, we can like walk through the article and I can like uh, just explain it. And first of all, you know, thank you to everyone. Uh, shout out to Damu and Block Dev as well. I feature like your guys's Lugi build. I think it was like a really good example because it's like, um, you know, how it started, how it, what it is now kind of um, situation there. And Spencer, so much thank you for the edits. Um, yeah, Grammarly failed me in a lot of areas, but <laughs> yeah, let me just share my screen. Really, this article is the first place that brings the loogie verse together. There's a lot of cool loogie things that no one knows about and your article kind of documents them. We probably need to put the uh, the earrings in there. <laughs> edit, exactly. live edit, earrings are loose. There we go. Looks good. Take it away, Etta. Yeah, so um, it, it's on Hashnode. We did like post on Twitter and I'll share the links as well. I think I shared them in the group, uh, but basically what, what the article is kind of trying to do is like walk through from step one like how you can get involved in not just like build guild but web3 so first of all like kind of a quick explainer on scaffold deep and then speed run ethereum and then lastly kind of getting into build guild like how you can join you know submitting your builds um and kind of being active in the community so i also tried to highlight like what we do in build guild so like building all the Different. I did include content here, so I think that's also something uh, to include as well to add on to what you said, just Austin. Um, but yeah, so like building tools, try to add like more details. Uh, it did turn out to be like an eight or nine minute read. <laughs> I think I, I cannot finish an article unless it's like two thousand words. <laughs> but what's yeah, the target? Like when you're writing an article, how long do you usually want it to be? Well, I try to make it like as short as possible um so like five it, minutes or less or something it like generally that. ends up like eight nine minutes just okay. because like even after eliminating everything i feel like i want to add these but it's nice to like write it and then like just use pieces of it so like you can use a lot of this stuff afterwards as well on like other things but yeah it generally ends up at like eight nine minutes uh and yeah i think <laughs> you can see my shameless plug that i like my own article but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and then over here, so we have the Luigi's again, thank you so much for like answering a lot of questions on this as well, but it kind of highlights like going from the NFT collection to, you know, optimistic Luigi's, fancy Luigi's, Luigi tank, etc. And there were like really nice bow tie Fridays, which I kind of went through to look with when, which was a couple of months ago, where I probably did not know a lot about Web3. <laughs> so there were like really nice builds to watch over there. And I tried to add like a few details, not too technical, like it's not really a technical deep dive into any of the projects, but just like a high level overview of what's going on. Um, and yeah, like basically I think it can be helpful for anyone who's interested in, um, in getting started in Web3 or like a Web3 builder who just wants to like experiment more and get more involved on where to go, what to do. Um, yeah, and published just before our call today. <laughs> so open to any feedback. Again, like, please do let me know. Um, yeah, you can give me the negative comments as well. I'm open to that as well. But um, yeah, that's quick overview. I think that this is uh, amazing. And, and I think like we don't appreciate enough like these kind of things because, uh, you know, I started with the Bill Guild like last year. And I remember like landing into the web website of Bill Guild and I didn't understand like anything. So I was like, what, what is this? You know, like what is these people trying to do? So having like something like this is going to be super helpful for people like landing on the page on the speedrun Ethereum on Bill Guild. And reading this article, I, I think it gives you like a really good overview on what are we really doing, right? So like thank you. 
Ella, for, for this. <laughs> yeah, and that's a really good point as well, right? Like we can use some of the stuff over there on the website, for example, or like have extra places or like links, et cetera, uh, which can be helpful for someone landing to the website. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate that feedback. <laughs> And we're, we're all just two like introverted nerds to do a lot of like outgoing work. And so it's just nice to have an article that covers some of the stuff like that, like a lot of this stuff we would start to forget about, right? There, there's so many, like you said, good build guild videos where we have these videos from Fridays where we just like speed run through six different projects. And then like we kind of put them on the shelf or they kind of sit there and wait to be forked. And then we kind of move on to something else. And there's not a lot of things that are highlighting those. So it's just, yeah, just in general, I think it would be great if we could do a little bit more writing about the stuff that we're that we're working on. And yeah, now I have this nice little shareable link that I can say, you know, if someone's like, what the fuck's the Build Guild? I can be like, well, go to buildguild.com, but here's an article that, that fills it in, you know, fills in more of the details. Even if someone's like, what kind of SVG NFTs are you working on? I could be like, well, here's this article. <laughs> so yeah, great, great article. Very like nice shareable thing. Uh, good work, Etta. We need to do that more often. Uh, what was I going to, I was going to add something to that, but I think I lost it. Oh, oh, could you paste the link into the chat so I can make sure that we link to the article in the video when we post the video? And then I think it's me next, right? I think I'm going to steal the screen and talk about the Robston merge. So the Robston merge just happened. It went to uh, proof of stake. And Carlos has been thinking about this idea of an NFT where uh, you could tell on chain that we moved to proof of stake. And the way to do that, uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, I think uh, Miguel on Twitter showed us how to do this. And I'll pull up the code real quick. And uh, so, so my goal was I want to make like a little, like a little fuse, basically a little smart contract that sits uh, on whatever chain's about to go to POS. And before they go to proof of stake, this uh, like block difficulty, here it is right here. And again, like I am not a giga brain. <laughs> there are people building these protocols that are way smarter that understand like why this is. I don't understand why the difficulty, I mean, I guess it's proof of stake difficulty is different and proof of work difficulty is like how, how arbitrarily hard it is to mine a block and you don't need that difficulty in proof of stake. So there's something else going on. But uh, yeah, basically Miguel from Twitter was like, oh, you can check to see if difficulty is greater than two to the power of 64. And if it is, then you're on proof of stake. So I thought we could build like a simple, simple contract that basically uh, lets anyone check in. And if the difficulty is greater than, like if we're in proof of stake and we haven't already set the proof of stake block, then we set it and keep track of a couple other things, including the proof of stake king, right? Whoever, whoever made that transaction becomes the king, and then the king is allowed to withdraw money. And we could talk about that. Carlos was like, why did you create a withdraw pattern here instead of just like having it send the money, like all the money in the contract? And I was thinking that, so first of all, we load the contract up with money to incentivize anyone out there to click in here and click this. So there's, there's already kind of like this decentralized kind of bounty here where whoever the first person is that clicks this thing is gonna get paid. But when they, when they call this and it does flip this bit here and set you know, them as the POS king and the POS block, if they get paid in this transaction, I'm pretty sure the miners will try to front run that. And the miners will watch the mempool and they'll say, oh, it, like this transaction is being made by this person. And if I make that same exact transaction with a little bit more gas, I'll, I'll end up getting paid. So they like simulate it, they see that they would get paid and then they put their transaction in at a faster, uh, higher block or a higher gas price. I have no idea if that's like actually something that could happen, but that's why, <laughs> that's why I split it off into this withdraw from function. So they don't get paid when they flip the fuse, they just set themselves as the king. And then on, an, on a second transaction, once they are the king, they can get in here and withdraw the money. So, so hopefully saving them from getting griefed by some like MEV bot. 
I have no idea if that's truly the case, but this was like a one hour build. One of those things where I just sit down with Scaffold Leaf, I write up the smart contract, I tinker with it for a little bit, and then I deploy, you know, POS King dot surge and it goes live. And I did it the morning of the merge. Like I sat down, I wrote the whole thing, I deployed it. And then I got on the Robston merge call and I didn't realize like Vitalik and a whole bunch of people were going to be on there. It was like a huge call of like all these ballers. I, I was like wearing the shirt from the day before I hadn't showered. I was a mess, <laughs> but, but I got on and I had this ready to go. And then as soon as the merge happened, like uh, it looks like Zach was the first one to make the transaction and become the POS king and claim the 4.2 uh, Robston that was in here. But uh, you could, yeah, you could make transactions and try it. That, oh, that's another thing. I didn't want the transaction to fail. You know how like when MetaMask detects that the transaction will fail, it just doesn't let you make it. So, so it, I knew it was going to be many blocks behind already. So I set it up so you could just like keep making the transaction every block if you wanted to. And if, if it was just an attempt, it would just, you know, charge you the gas to make that attempt. And this allows like lots of transactions to happen and not get blocked or have anything special where you have to like sign a raw transaction to get it to go through. But still, it still fell apart uh, because I think probably the RPC or or even like Robston Etherscan was down because of it. So there's definitely some other like weak, uh, you know, uh, weakest links in in terms of getting this thing to work kind of we want to get the exact block and that's going to be very hard. Like it's very hard to ensure that the exact block of the very first block happens. In fact, the very first block on proof of stake mainnet could have zero transactions in it. And therefore like we wouldn't be able to track it like this. And Carlos has mentioned like an Oracle or something else, but I just feel like since it's on chain and you can check it with this, we should build it into the smart contract. But yeah, it just shows how like, in a decentralized network, it's kind of like a game to compete and you need to set up your rules and your incentives correctly to get people to play the game to like get the behavior that you want out of it. Okay, I'm going to hand it off to Carlos because I think once we have that smart contract and we have the fuse and we can flip the fuse and we can track what block was the first noted POS block. Then there's some other fun like kind of gambly NFT things you can do and I'll, I'll hand that off to Carlos to to fill that in. Okay, let me share. Oh yeah, you're gonna explain it a lot better than I did. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm not going to explain. I'm just going to paste like this link. Like if anyone wants to go deeper on why this is happening, like, like Austin mentioned, um, like you can check if the value of block difficulty is greater than two to the power of 64, you can say that uh, we are uh, after the merge. And that is because they are reusing the difficulty opcode to use like this new operation, like the brave random. Uh, so they are like using the same, you know, like the same opcode. So that's why you can, you know, like if the value is between zero and two to the power to 64, that means that you are pre-merged. Because like this is like the actual uh, value of the difficulty, so I think it's like like a nice a nice trick I think. And that Randau right? thing hints that on proof of stake, you can we're yeah. going to have randomness. We can start to to query instead of using like block hash for NFTs, we're going to be able to like actually get a random number from the chain, which is really really cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, the thing is that we were discussing this um, merge and first proof of stake block, and I wanted to build like something on top of that. And I think after thirty seconds of thinking it through, I was like, okay, let's do like an NFT game, right? Like that. What else? <laughs> of course, it's going to be an NFT game. So the thing is that, like Austin mentioned, it's easy to tell on chain if you are pre-merge or post-merge. It's easy to do that. But what is difficult to do is like getting the exact block number where that happened or, or the first proof of stake block. That's really difficult to do. And I, I we can be 100% sure that that's going to happen. But uh, I like the idea that uh, Austin did uh, about creating like this uh, incentivized uh, Oracle contract, right? So you pay the person who said that that block. And this is actually like my, my version of it, but it's like the, the, same, the same stuff. 
So you have like this set post block. And if it's not set yet and we are on proof of stake, then you know you get the winner and you uh, save the block number. I call it like first registered post block because it's actually like the first one that we registered, but that doesn't mean that it's actually the first, the first one, right? Okay. So now uh, after you have this, I, I guess that if you put like a bunch of money, a, a bunch of ETH here, there will be like a lot of people like trying to get it right. And so the, the, better, the bigger the money, the, the bigger the chances that we get like the block uh, right, the block number. Okay, so this NFT game uh, is about to guess the first proof of stake block number. And you can, you can mint whatever token ID you want. Like there is no scarcity on this, on this NFT. And that token ID is representing the actual block number, right? So yeah, let, let's see the code first. So we are using this Oracle contract. And if we have a value, because it starts with zero. So if we have that value, that block, imagine that is the, the block 1000. So we try to get the owner of that token ID, right? And uh, if there is no owner, then this, this will revert, right? Because I think this owner of uh, uh, reverts, right? When, let me check, no, no, that will be here. Owner. Yeah, this, this will revert if, we, if there is no owner yet. So um, then the, you know, the winner, we will get like 90% of the, of the minting proceeds and the 10% will go to the bill guild, uh, of course. And um, yeah, and I build like a basic um, UI. So let me let me show it to you. Oh, it should be up. I like how you said that you thought about it for like thirty seconds. <laughs> so thought about it for thirty seconds, spent twenty minutes building a contract, and then spent two hours writing the React components to get the front end to work. Is how any any good Web three project works. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So by the way, this is my, my first time like using the, the TypeScript version of, of Scaffold ETH because I always, you know, when I start a new build, I'm always using my own builds and, and, and from there. So, but this time I wanted to, you know, to, to start with a new flavor of Scaffold ETH and it's working great so far. So thank you to, I think, Sabran and, and Mark are the two main people that are working there. So thank you for that. It is amazing, like the bindings and stuff. So. Yeah, thank you. And you can find those other flavors in the Scaffold ETH uh, main repository. Yes. Like if you just go to main Scaffold ETH, scroll down and there's like a little ice cream cone that shows the different flavors. And there's like TypeScript. And I, I use the Truffle version every once in a while for fun. Like there's a lot of good ones. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, okay. So this is a, like a fresh uh, hard hat network. Uh, oh, look at this. This is like a nice banner wallet, like a, a nice number and a nice block. Boom, it boom, is. So, yeah. Like a lot of heroes here. Okay. We're punk so wallet collectors around here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, find this uh, this address a bit. And okay, so what I'm going to do, so this is like the current mainnet block and there's like zero NFT mint and the pot of course is empty right now. So I'm going to mean like, if you click actually here, this is like the, this is like the mainnet block. And if you know, you can start like commenting this and I created this util that it tells awesome. you like an estimation when the when the, the date is. I mean, of course, this is an estimation because we have like all the this difficulty bomb on all of that, so it's really hard to estimate. But for it's such a I nice feature, it, though. Like as a as a builder of an app, like putting that estimation there is so nice because when you when you have a block number, it's so hard. You would go out to a third party service to figure out the block. Yeah. that is such a good addition. Yeah, I think I think maybe that could be part of like uh, for ETH components or something like that, right? Like having like that beauty. Yeah. Okay. So let's have like a five here. So this is like November twenty fifth. Okay. Let's mint this one, and then you know, I don't know this one. I mean, August seventeenth is looking pretty good. How do we get August seventeenth? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. So this one July. So. Uh, September two. You, you need to Oof. put the. There we go. Uh, That's what we're doing. What's that? You need there to put a. You need. You need to put a, a calendar picker and yeah. get the block number from that day. 
I think that will be like a way better UI, but you know, this was like a like one quick build. So I didn't want to spend a lot of time, but yeah, definitely if you want to push this forward, yeah, you, we should be like a better, you know, UI for, for it. And the calendar, yeah, I think that the calendar is uh, is is the thing to do. Okay, so I think this will be it. I I was 16. Great one. Okay. So now let's uh well let, let's open like a new and the, the good thing about burner wallets that you can like open like a new window and you get a different uh, a different address. So let's also find this one. And um, I don't know. So the pot is increasing, the total mint is three. So let's uh, have I, let's say that this guy is less is more pessimistic. So Ooh. <laughs> And then another one. Okay, so let me try to do this. Okay, so these are the, the two person like uh, on on this um, working on, so, uh, playing on this game. So now uh, to test this, what I did is uh, on this um, oracle, I created like this set post block force function. Just you know, I can like set and like mimic like the behavior. So I'm going to you know like pick for example like this uh, this block. So that block is going to be the winner. I'm going to send the transaction and you will see that this should change. Let's wait. Yeah, like the game is over. Like this is the winner because you have the block. You can, oh, you can even go to my blocks and you will see your, your NFTs. And this is the, the winner block. This is actually like some like the SVG. Like is it like SVG? Some, yeah. Yes, yes. Like thanks, thanks to the Lugis, right? Like I copy like most of the, of the SVG code and the and the metadata from from the lucas so yeah this is actually like a, an sbg it's not very pretty but this one <laughs> i don't know so now you can you know you can go here and and claim your price because you have like the block where that happened and you should see like your if incremented in and okay. and once you buy the block, no one else can own that block. Is yes. that right? There's yes. and, and there's, I mean, there's so many blocks around the time that it's going to happen that I could see. There's there's no penalty for buying late either. It seems like almost like the price of buying the NFT should go up over time. Where like as we get closer to the merge, it actually costs like point five ETH, right? But like right now you could get one for like 0.01 ETH or something. So like to make making the game, like if you guess a lot, like early, mm -hmm. you should win more, it should cost less or something. But this is like ready to go, man. Like we could put this out there. Like you've, yeah. you've basically got it. It's like a full app where you could mint the NFT. It's awesome. Yeah, so um, about like what you say right now about the blocks, and um, I have like a different version at the beginning because right now, like the winner is just like the person who owns that specific block. Like before, I mean, I can even like maybe like um, show the code here, but I have like a, like a loop where it went like both ways, like below and above that block and trying to find like the closest one. But I thought maybe that's not a good idea because also it, it takes like a lot of gas, but if you have like a, you know, like, like the Oracle block is set, at that NFT is not mint. So just go there and mint that that block, that token ID, and you will win, right? So that's what I ended with this, you know, like you have to have like the exact block if you want to if you want to win. And remember that this is not, not the it's like the first register block. So that might not be like the first one, like the real one, but at least it's the one that the Oracle has um, registered. So yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to put this uh, I learned like a lot like building this and I don't know I just wanted to show it to you all and maybe getting some feedback and maybe we can like keep pushing this and it will be like a fun way to to fund the you know the the, the build game. I don't know uh, so the next merge is Gorley right I wonder if for that merge call we could put this out on Gorley and have people buying nfts that are like kind of guessing the block even if it's only like 30 minutes before the merge, people can kind of get a guess at what it's going to be and start buying some of those NFTs that are close. So I would say the best next step for this is let's put it on Gorley and have it ready in a couple of weeks to, to actually just show it off on the, on the Gorley merge call, like the Robston call and get some folks playing with it. 
And, and if, uh, you know, it looks good, maybe we put it on mainnet for the mainnet one. Yeah. That will happen in August, I hope, and not 2023 May. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. Great build, Carlos. It's like a full product. Like that's another thing with like Paul and Scaffold ETH. It's like, it blurs the line between I'm tinkering around with how this works. I'm learning how it works. I have a prototype. And now all of a sudden it's like, actually that's a product. Like we could deploy that. Like they're like the thing, like with the calendar or something we could add, but it's like not totally necessary and people could get in and actually mint the NFT. So good work, Carlos. Thanks. Anybody else, anything else to share on Bowtie Friday? Anybody building anything with Scaffold E? Boop, boop, boop. Let me show off real quick uh, the thing that Daniele made. Uh, it is this conviction voting thing. Uh, I think we've showed it. Have we shown off the conviction voting stuff already on a call? I can't remember if we've showed this off before, but he basically made a conviction voting app where you can search for scaffold ETH or whatever and pick out uh, that app to stake on. And then uh, maybe we stake on Blaine too from uh, Babel where, okay. And then I hit, oh, I think I, I think my button is hidden here. Oh, oh, oh wait, I'm not connected. That's why. Yeah. So then as you kind of stake on these things, they're added to your cart and then you can go to your cart and kind of distribute some of your GTC to these and then make a transaction that locks up your GTC on behalf of these Gitcoin grants. And so what that does is it creates some signal, <clears throat> but we're using conviction voting. So the longer you have those locked up, if I go back to the main page, the longer I have, you know, I locked up like 150 and it's already 154 or something like that. The longer this is locked up, the more conviction you have. So you can lock up your GTC and anyone can lock up their GTC on behalf of any grant and then we're using the conviction voting as signal for how to sort Gitcoin grants on this page. So when you go to fund a Gitcoin grant, there's a lot of different ways you can look at that. I think weighted shuffle is probably the default, uh, but, and this will have ones that are like winning currently, right? But if I put this on GTC conviction voting, it should be sorted by the ones that people have stakes for. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's like 100% working. It's man, Git, Gitcoin is just a, an ominous blob to deal with in terms of people and their products. But I think it's sorting by conviction voting, but we haven't been able to like prove that it works. But it's super dope that uh, Daniele was able to kind of put this together in a matter of like 48 hours and then like a week to, to refine it. And it's part of like a production level launch with Gitcoin. So, so props to him for putting that together. I think that's it. I think we're done. Happy Bowtie Friday. We did it. All right. See you all later. Thanks for being here. Happy Bowtie Friday. Take care.